What's up, young world? What is up, young world? As always, welcome to Savon's Legendary Podcast. I think this is episode 11. Yes. A uh, big shout out to my man, Tony Terry. Uh, my brother who got on episode 10 with me. Y'all got to go check that out. <clears throat> um, see, I had a, I had a, I had something I wanted to talk about uh, today. You know, y'all know me and my controversial topics, right? But I just watched, right, the versus Big Daddy Kane against KRS-One. And so I wanted to, I want to talk about that a little bit. <clears throat> If you're a hip-hop head like I am, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Uh, share, 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 share. Notification bell and comment. The reason, the reason I, you know, I say these things, remind you guys to share and to comment because for this podcast to like go further, you know, uh, YouTube's algorithms and these platforms' algorithms are based on uh, sharing, how many people share, how many people comment, how many people hit the notification bell, um, subscribe, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very important that you guys, you know, support. It don't cost a dollar. Subscribe, share, notification bell, subscribe. Did I already say subscribe? I might have. Okay. Anyways, so if y'all was under a rock somewhere and didn't get to check out the Big Daddy Kane KRS One versus uh, I want to, I want to, I kind of want to, uh, preface this with Big Daddy K and Karis One in their primes, right? Was a little bit ahead of like before my time. Okay. Uh, I ain't trying to date myself, uh, here, but, uh, date as an age. You motherfuckers. Uh, but they were a little ahead of my time, but I'm still a hip hop head and I'm a historian by nature. So, um, yeah, it was, it was electric. It was electric. And it's funny cause, um, I heard Swiss beats give them both, you know, props and big them both up. And he, and he also says something that kind of stuck with me. He said, you know, we got kicked out of a certain building or we can't go and do this in a certain building anymore because they did this at Barclay in Brooklyn, at the Barclay Center in, Brook in Brooklyn. Uh, so that tells me Madison Square Garden ain't letting them do verses no more. Probably after that dip set shit. Damn, dip set, dip, dip, set, set. In the locks, L-O-X. It's probably after that they wouldn't, I don't, did they have a battle after the locks? And, uh, Dipset at Madison Square. I don't remember, but uh, it kind he kind of alluded to to that. So that the Barclay man <clears throat> crowd is going crazy, waiting for Kane, waiting for KRS. KRS comes out, and you know they give them both. Uh, Fat Joe give them both a big intro, right? So Chris comes out, KRS one comes out, and uh, you know waiting for. Big Daddy Kane to come out. And they're like, yo, we're Big Daddy Kane. And then Fat Joe is like, you know, it's not a hip-hop show. 
unless it's some technical difficulties. Keras one gets on the mic and says, "Ain't no, ain't no technical difficulty. He hiding in his dressing room." <laughs> So he just starts. He just starts. They don't. They don't flip a coin. Who goes first? Nothing. He just Carol's one just goes in. And Kane hears that and comes out fresh, tracksuit, red and cream with the with the cream fedora. Ooh, I should have worn my fedora. I should have worn one of my fedoras. That's what I should have did. Should I go get it? Nah, I ain't gonna go get it. I ain't gonna get it. I ain't seeing my fedoras. Why? But. Even though it was late 80s, very, very early 90s hip-hop, it was electric. It was electric. And for the people that don't know, uh, everybody wanted to see Big Daddy Kane and Rakim. Because they have been, not I, I ain't going to say feuding because it hasn't been a feud, but that uh, battle or celebration, whatever verses want to call it, whatever Trilla is calling it nowadays, uh, has been brewing for decades. Big Daddy Kane and Rakim. Um, and if you know anything about me and my music career, um, I toured with Rakim 2016, 2017. So that was a, that did a lot for my music career. Uh, I mean, it was, it was it was such a roller coaster experience, uh, uh, but I remember <clears throat> during during that time, me and Rakim was at a bowling alley. I think it was in either Brooklyn or the Bronx. It was in a bowling alley, and uh, Melly Mel was performing. They had a stage. It was like a venue, but it was a bowling alley too. So Melly Mel's performing. Uh, uh, DJ Premier is there talking to us. Me and Rogers having our own like private conversations, you know, which I will not uh, obviously dive too much into. But what he did say was <clears throat> back when he was on top and reigning supreme, this is Rakim. He did say that, and this is public information. He says, <clears throat> sorry. He says that, uh, you know, back then, if you was a rapper, you couldn't even talk to that nigga. You understand? He said, if if you rap, you can't even be in my presence. Like he uh fancied himself the God MC uh in a very, very real way. And he just that was his mentality, that was his approach. That's how he felt. He told me, he said, say, I could if you was you couldn't even you couldn't even I, I wouldn't even entertain you with a conversation. I wouldn't even entertain you with a conversation. Um, I asked, I asked Ra about how he felt about Jay-Z. Um, and he had nothing but admiration for him. Obviously, I mean, who, who really doesn't? I mean, the guy is so successful and beat so many different odds and broke so many records and bridged so many gaps and opened the doors for like, he opened the doors for companies, not just individuals and artists and things. He opened the door for companies and he's made so many millionaires. Uh, and the, and I, the reason I asked Ra about how he felt about Jay-Z, because diving a little bit into hip hop here, but Rakim have a record called The Watcher. And on Jay-Z's Blueprint 2 album, he has a record called The Watcher 2. Produced by Dr. Dre. Featuring Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre's rapping on it. Rakim is rapping on it. And of course, Jay-Z is rapping on it. Can you imagine a record produced by Dr. Dre? Dr. Dre's rapping on it. It's a Jay-Z record featuring Rakim. That's a sequel to Rakim's Watcher record already. <laughs> that's absolutely insanity. That's, that's hip-hop insanity. So... That's what that's what prompted me to ask him about, you know, Jay. Utmost admiration for him. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, so 
But everyone wanted the Rock Him and Big Daddy Kane verses. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Rakim declined. Now, my thing is, I don't know who Rakim would be in the verses now with. What do y'all comment below? Who do y'all think? And don't and don't give me give me give me some good stuff. Don't you know? Don't say Trick Daddy. You know, nothing like that. But <laughs> but who would Rakim battle now, or 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 go in the verses against? Uh. He can't, I mean, you kind of want to stay in your era because if if not, it's kind of like an unequal, you know, playing field. It's an unbalanced playing field. So you kind of want to stay somewhere in your, your era. Like you don't want to, obviously, you don't want to, you know, rock him versus Meek Mill. I mean, that's such a different time and a different vibe and frequency and feeling. You don't want to do that. That's That'd be some bullshit. I, I wouldn't even tune in. That's, that, that's crayon box. But... Only person I can come up with instead of Kane is LL. That's it. Rakim is such a legend, y'all. I'll tell y'all a quick story. Uh, I didn't perform at this show, but I was still touring with Rakim. And we was at the Fox Theater in Detroit. I didn't even tell my Detroit people when I was there. But... Uh, we got there, and uh, EPMD is me, EPMD, and Rakim. But the headliner of the show was Ice Cube. This wasn't that long ago. And so <laughs> the backstage area, Ice Cube wasn't there yet. Um, I forget who else was there. I think Dougie Fresh might have been there, too. I'm not sure. But I know Scarface was there. Um, Trick Trick was there. Shout out to my man Trick Trick. He was there. I got to meet Scarface. Uh, but so somebody's performing ice cube, not there yet. And then all of a sudden where everybody's backstage, mingling, talking, taking pictures, whatever. Then security comes back there and it's like ice cube just pulled up. Everybody got to go in their dress rooms. You can't come out. Ice cube, part of his security detail won't even let artists, artists, be outside of their dressing room. <laughs> Ice Cube with Gangsta for real. And so, you know, I'm with Rakim and Matt, which is Rakim's manager, longtime manager. So security's like, nah, you got everybody got to go in the dressing room, go in the dressing room. You like clear all, ain't not a one human body back here or Ice Cube not coming in. Like, wowzers. Now, I, met, I never met Cube at this point. So I go up all the stairs in the Fox stairs, this bunch of levels and stairs. And so I go up to, you know, and I think uh, I'm in, I think we're in Rockham dressing room or EPMD. Anyways, we all in there. Shout out to my man, P. Shout out to uh, Eric Sermon, man. Uh, sidebar, I'll get back to the story. With, in that dressing room, it, it made me want to cry, man. They saw what I was doing. They saw my music, all of those things. And Rockham and P., looked at me and was like, say, well, Rakim looked at me and said, say, if you, if you keep on the level you going in five years, you will be me. What? What? <laughs> I said five years. If you keep doing you the way you doing you, you will be me. Well, we coming up on that fifth year, Rod. I might need a little help. I need a verse or something. Rod, help me out. <laughs> But uh, they both looked at me and said, uh, you got two big brothers in hip hop for life. This was Parrish from EPMD and my man Rockham. So long story short, um, you know, I come in there and I go to Matt and I'm like, Matt, you know, I want to be out there. But security like Ice Cube coming in, can't nobody be out there. And, you know, Matt, Matt is a tall, slender white guy, right? Super smart, super talented. He says, uh, hmm, tell him you with Matt. I was like, Matt, they, they are very serious about this now. Like, I, they, they kept, like, they told me to get out of there a couple of times. Like, he was like, I know, I know. Go back down if you want to. And if you do, and they stop you, tell them you with Matt. 
I'm like, I respect you, Matt. I'm going to look like a complete asshole. This is asshole.org in the making. So I go down there. <laughs> Sure as I'm dark skinned, they stopped me, right? And they're like, Yo, my man, you can't be back here. We told you once. I said, Watch this, watch this, watch this. I tried this. I said, I'm Savon, nigga. You're crazy. He said, What? I said, I'm Savon. He said, You got to get out of here or we're going to put you out. I said, mm, Y'all are serious. All right. Uh, <laughs> so I said, Well, I'm with Rakim and Matt. He said, Matt. I said, yeah. He said, Matt Kim? I said, yeah. He said, oh, man, my bad, my man. Go ahead. You good. You good. You good. Are you with anybody? I'm like, nah, it's just, it's, nah, I'm just roaming around by myself. I'm like, nah, you good. You good. You can go in out. You good. <laughs> oh, shout out to Matt, my big homie. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. <laughs> I thought it was going to be uh I thought I thought it was going to be the thuggish ruggish bone back there, son. <laughs> but sure as I'm dark skinned. Look, I'm from Detroit. Man, how much how, how you how come you got more juice than me in my own city? What is going on? But it worked. It worked. So Ice Cube, you know, everyone goes, Rakim goes, I mean, listen, Detroit loves Rock, listen, Detroit, Rock goes, you know, shout out to DJ Technician, uh, Rakim DJ, he also DJs uh, The Locks, uh, Raekwon, the Wu-Tang, The Locks, Rakim, right? And if y'all seen the Dipset Locks, he is 50% of the reason The Locks destroyed Diplomats that night. Look up DJ Technician. That's my that's my big homie. Well, I don't know big, but yeah, he's definitely my homie. We we actually shoe battle from time to time. Anyways, so Tech gives Rod this enormous dramatic in entrance, like intro, like he always does. I mean, it's it's violins and dramatic. It look it sound like the the ending of a Denzel Washington movie, and it's so dope. Rod walks on this. Rod, Rod walks back. Uh to the front of the stage and normally i walk out with him and i was just recording on my phone so he walks out all you see is lights sky full of lighters it was nothing but cell phone flashlights it was a sea of those you couldn't even see a human pitch black nothing but lights rakim got his microphone in his back jean pocket he just walks out there, goes to the edge of the stage, you know what I'm saying, crosses his arms. The place goes fucking bananas. You got to understand, 2016, 20, most people never saw Rakim in person. It was like he was like a unicorn or like an anomaly or something like that. You didn't see him. And there was a lot of people's first time seeing him place erupts like a fucking volcano and he just sits there and absorbs it i said lord 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 kills it ice cube headlines he goes after Ra. dub c is hyping him is uh ice cube hype man they do uh all they hits whatever come off the stage now by this me and rakim is on the side of the stage watching ice cube gets off the stage bandana under his L.A. hat, sweating profusely, sees Rakim, and just, they never met in person. I, Ice Cube and Rakim never met. Like, that sounds, that doesn't sound right. It sounds crazy, but it's true. Never met. They give each other a pound, give each other a hug, whisper something. Me, uh, Ice Cube and Vice is in his dressing room. Me, Dub C, Matt, Rakim. Nobody else allowed. Ice Cube bow downs to him, and I don't mean bow down in a district like a like a like a subordinate way. I, let's let's be clear. Ice Cube is a whole king, a whole king. He bowed down. He bowed down in like a hip hop respect 
type of way. Like you were the God MC, I respect you in your body of work. And Rakim is so fucking humble. The guy takes, he will sit there and take pictures for four hours. He is so humble. He was trying to give Ice Cube all the flowers and props in the world. While Ice Cube is trying to give him all the roses. It was like a battle of who could give more gratitude. That's what kings do. We don't shoot shoot up each other's tour buses like these youngsters, these idiots is fucking doing a day. We respect people's craft and their work ethic to get there because it's not easy. It's not easy. I've been doing this a long time. It's not easy to get to that level. And they both are just appreciating each other. And it's so dope to see them. Obviously, they're older than I am and, you know, 12 million light years more successful than I am. <laughs> but I was giddy just to be a fly on the wall and, and just witness it. So uh, me and Rakim, we get, later we get on this, you know, we get in the Sprinter or whatever, heading back to the hotel. He leans back and was like, yo, uh, hey, yo, say, you got your phone on you, son? So I said, yeah, he said, let me see it. Gave him my phone. That was a very bad Rakim impression. Rob, you're looking at this. I'm gonna work on it. I, I, I know how to get it. I know I know how to get you. I, I, I'm gonna work on it. But uh, I give him my phone, and he gives it back to me. And after a couple minutes, he put his home phone in there. Yes, landline, sucker. Y'all some suckers if you don't got a landline. I'm a sucker. <laughs> and his cell phone number, the whole nine was like. You got a big homie. Call me anytime. Have I ever used that? Never. Because it was the gesture for me. You know what I'm saying? People look at girls nowadays and be like, yo, it's the ass for me. Yo, it's the eyes for me. Yo, it's the car for me. It's the gesture for me. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes it has nothing to do with someone is trying to do what somebody is trying to do for you or give you. Sometimes it's just the gesture that means the world to you. And we need to start appreciating people's gestures to us way more than we do. Because people are doing things for us that they don't have to do. And they do it in spite of that. And that shit. Can we normalize appreciating people's efforts? Can we normalize that shit? These fucking kids out here. I love y'all kids, man, but I want to see y'all in 20 years. I, can we re-meet? Can we re revisit this in 20? <laughs> so, this is the man, Rakim, that everybody really wanted to see go against Kane. But, Karis won is not no slouch, and many people say he won. I would probably venture to say what you think I'm going to say? What do you think I'm going to say? I'm going to venture to say KRS-1. KRS-1-1. That's what I'll venture to say. And this is, in my opinion, why. My opinion about it is... Hold on. My opinion about it is... Um, the approach to it, the aggressiveness... The continuity of enormous tracks. Because I didn't know, I only know, I, I didn't know that many KRS records. Now, Big Daddy Kane was more, for, for people that don't know, Big Daddy Kane was way more commercially successful than KRS One. Commercially, radio, com no. But the way it hit was different. So, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a venture to say Chris won in my humble opinion as well. Um, so that takes me to another versus. And I put this out. Oh, this is a good one. Oh, this is a good one. You know the next verse. You know, man, you know the verses that will. I got two. Number one, this verses, both of these verses would break the internet. 
And I put this out there on my Instagram a long time ago. And people, and I knew the backlash I was going to get. I knew what people was going to say. I did it. I did that shit anyways. Break the internet versus Swizzy, Timbo, uh, Trilla. This is Savon said it first. And I've been said it. So this is Savon saying it again. Usher versus who y'all think I'm going to say? Oh, this is a good one. Justin Timberlake. Yes. Usher versus Justin Timberlake. Who y'all got? I'll wait. Who I'll wait. I'll wait. Who y'all got? Comment below. Who y'all got? Because we're going to make this shit happen. Justin Timberlake. Usher. Who y'all got? Now, you know, there was the thing against, you know, Diddy and Jermaine Dupri not too long ago. And they went at it. And Usher, you know, JD produced a lot of Usher records. JT. Usher. Let me tell y'all who I got. I got Justin Timberlake by a long shot. This is why. And I know y'all, I know all my black friends, well, not all of them, but a lot of them was like, yo, uh, that's not even a battle. That's not, Usher will wash. I thought the same shit until, and I look this up. Are y'all ready? Please look this up as soon as you can. I forget what Super Bowl it was, but it was Justin Timberlake by himself. Whole Super Bowl halftime show by himself. It uh, it made me a Justin Timberlake fan. His vocal range is so soulful. He did that Prince tribute. Like, y'all are fucking bugging. Usher, listen, j Pat Management, uh, rest in peace, Meech. Listen, the GGs, China, your sisters, y'all know, y'all already know. With y'all. Love me some Usher. Usher in the city I live in. Justin Timberlake is a fit. He's an anomaly. That white boy, go watch. Super Bowl halftime show is just is just because you know how features and different artists is just Justin Timberlake. Oh my God! I would I would even go out and I watch how y'all do me. Now watch how y'all do me, and don't think I'm a smart guy. Don't think I'm just saying stuff because I'm not. I do my research. Anybody that know me know Savon. Don't talk. Unless I do my research. I don't even talk. I do research and then I talk. Now watch this. I'll venture out to say Justin Timberlake's halftime Super Bowl show was the top two Super Bowl show in Super Bowl halftime history. Bang. And yes, I did go watch Michael Jackson's a few times. Yes, I watched Prince's a few times. The weekend joint, that's not even in the in the conversation. Beyonce had a dope. Now, what I think the second dopest joint is, perhaps, or in, at least in the top three, is the one where it was Beyonce, um, uh, not Miguel. What's the, uh, help me out, y'all, the light skin. Uh, uh, Jesus. Y'all know, not, not Miguel, the other one. Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars, Beyonce, and Coldplay. That Super Bowl halftime show was absolutely retardo. But Justin did that by himself. Please comment below. Right here. Bing! Who y'all got versus Usher versus Justin Timberlake? I got my money on Justin. Whoever want a side bet, DM me. Comment below what you want a side bet. Side bet, main bet, middle bet, top bet. Let me know. Now, 
the second verses, which will never happen. This is like my unicorn, um, I still believe in magic verses. First, first before one of the one of the opponents is Jay Z, which he would never ever in a billion years do a versus. He don't even do interviews. Y'all know that. And if he do, is is dumb rare, dumb rare. Who could Jay Z be with and compete against in a versus? It's only two names that even. It's only two names for me is Eminem and Nas. Nobody else. No one else. No one. I mean, I could be, I could be, I could be missing someone. Y'all comment. Who do y'all think Jay? I mean, obviously, you know, we want to keep it hip hop. So don't say Celine Dion or some dumb shit. Okay. But in hip hop, who niggas will run out of songs. Jay-Z catalog is, and I don't mean how many songs they've recorded. I've recorded 600 and some songs or more. I'm talking about catalog of notable rec think ones, you know, or hits. We can, we can, we can say all hits who got more. Ooh, ooh, I got somebody. And I know who y'all gonna comment. Go ahead and comment. I know who y'all gonna say. Y'all gonna say Drake. I knew it. I knew it. Look at all the Drake comments. I knew it. 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 Damn. Damn, that's a good one. <laughs> That is a good one. I can't believe I forgot about Drake. Motherfuckers act like they forgot about Drake. <laughs> Nowadays, everybody want to talk like they got something to say, but nothing comes out when they move their lips. Just a bunch of gibberish and motherfuckers act like they forgot about Drake. <laughs> Yo, Drake. Oh. The problem with that battle or versus would be, first of all, First of all, sidebar, Jay-Z would still win. This is why. Because if y'all notice, Versus is really not necessarily about the songs. It's about the memories and feeling that song ha gave you at that particular time in your life. That makes it nostalgic for you. That makes it memorable. It makes it part of your journey. It's ingrained in the, in the fabric of your life journey. Okay? Okay. That's what really makes verses a, a, a thing. I want y'all to sit here and tell me that Drake has more of those songs that are memorable to your life's journey than Jay-Z does. I'll wait. Won't wait long, but I'll wait. I'll wait. So, first, once again, it'll never happen. You know what would be dope? You know how, uh, do you remember Coachella when they did the uh, Tupac hologram? What if Jay-Z battled Biggie's hologram? 15 songs each, that's it. Just like uh, the, the Kane and uh, Kara's one, about 15 songs each, that's it. Now, now Jay-Z catalog is astronomical. Biggs is, is nowhere near as big as Jay-Z's. Rest in peace, Big. He didn't have a chance to make that much of a catalog. As much of a chance as Jay-Z had anyways. Okay? So, what if he battled Biggie's hologram? That would break life. <laughs> life. Or, or Tupac. Now, Tupac catalog is retarded, though. Now, it wouldn't be fair, per se, because they actually couldn't be there and you couldn't see them sweat and, you know, hear their voice and see the passion that they deliver in the records to you. You know what I'm saying? And see their energy in your face. You know what I'm saying? Like you can with people that, you know, are still here with us. But 
yo, what if Jay-Z, that would, yo, Jay, you the most accomplished, next to Drake, hip-hop artist in history. Come on, man. Do it for the culture, B. Do it for the culture. I opened up for Jay-Z in Toronto years ago. Uh, that was breathtaking, the sea of people. I had to remind myself to breathe. It was that overwhelming. Jay-Z does this shit every night if he wants to. Uh, who would battle Beyonce? Who y'all got? Where the beehive at? Where the beehive? Who would battle Beyonce? Who y'all got? Comment below. Y'all got a lot of comment to do. Comment below. Who could possibly battle Beyonce? Please don't say Janet Jackson. It would have to be, who we talking about? Madonna? Who we talking about? Uh, uh, who was the queen? Mary? Mary J. Blige? That might be a good one. If the, obviously, if the songs was, you know, limited, 15, 20 songs, whatever, that like you couldn't just, you know, niggas would run out of songs. Who y'all got? The Beyonce's? Or who I say? Mary J. Blige's. I don't know who else. I say Mary J. Blige. Off the top, that to me, that's a good fit because of how many hits Mary got. And obviously how many hits uh, B got. But comment below. Who y'all think? <clears throat> I don't know, man. I want to battle somebody. I want to versus somebody. What indie artists out there battle me? <laughs> you will lose. <laughs> Listen to me. You will lose. Straight like that. What indie hip hop artists want to battle me? And watch this. Everybody ain't even got to know our songs. It's just initial impact. They can hear them for the first time. I'm not a superstar, obviously. I'll battle another indie artist. Any one of y'all. Any one of y'all. Any one of y'all. We'll do 12 songs a piece. We'll do 15. Any, any, any direction you want to go in. This is a challenge. Whatever indie artist, DM me, message me, comment below. Who, whoever, let me know. My catalog is big. Some of the biggest indie records you gonna hear. Straight like that. So anyway, because I know ain't nobody gonna battle me. You got some balls, you battle me. What's up? Any one of y'all, let me know. We'd do it on my podcast. We'd go next screen for screen. We'd battle. We'd make it a thing. We'd make it a thing. If you beat me on my own podcast, you deserve the flowers. You deserve the trophy. It'll never fucking happen. Ever. With that being said, oh, man. Oh. I got a surprise for y'all. If I get 20 comments on this, let's make it 30. This is special. If I get 30 comments on this podcast, I have such a special treat for y'all that I could bring out next podcast. 30 comments. That means comment about everything I said. Uh, whew, the Usher against Justin Timberlake. Comment on that. Beyonce versus Mary J. Blige, unless you got somebody else you think would be a good fit for B. But it got to be obviously somebody female and very notable. Like they, they, like, you know. Uh, so if I get 30 comments, this is what can happen. I got something extremely special I'm going to bring out. I could bring out if I get 30 comments on this podcast. Uh, so yeah, I had a great time telling you some of my stories of things I've been through. Uh, I, I, I really want y'all comments so I can see, you know, it's different when you interviewing someone or got somebody else on your podcast, but I'm talking to y'all. Y'all talk back to me through the comments, right? 
Thank you so, so, so very much for checking out Savon's Legendary Podcast. Oh, before I go, watch this. Speaking of my catalog, oh, new EP dropping November 12th, Watercolors in the Street 2. It's ridiculous. Shout out to my man, Swifty McVeigh. I got a record with him on it uh, called Clip Monster. So fire, so fire. Produced by my man, Sonny. Shout out to my man Blake Camille producing on this uh, project as well. Shout out to my man Asaya Dio producing on this joint as well. Yo, Cold Curb is out. Produced by my man Asaya. Listen, um, I think I'm going to put some snippets uh, maybe before or after this podcast. Watercolors in the Street 2. Y'all got to go get Watercolors in the Street 1. Produced by my man Blake Camille. It is fire. Uh, Water, watercolors in the street one I catch you up to two so when two drop November 12th you'll be ready speaking of my catalog y'all can see what I'm talking about I can't nobody fuck with me out here independent artists thank you thank you thank you this has been episode number 11 Savon's legendary podcast as always peace young world you ready? You ain't ready. Ready for say You ain't ready. You ain't ready. Ready for say ready. I was in church, six out of seven days, never quit me work, six out of seven days, trying to die that hurt, six out of seven days, love can hurt, six out of, out of, out of. 21 and a half, the fun and became a savage. Play more games than the Mavericks. For love, I made.